Welcome back. Last we left off, um, our intrepid hero Milo had just encountered Sila and Anevia. Uh, Anevia was trapped under some rocks. Sila was trying to just brute force her way out and into no it. No reason to pause. And uh, you know, we I had decided it adventure. maybe wasn't that wasn't this wisest idea. Um, yes, we do have a light spell, and we're gonna put that on Sila as we need to be able to see and Sila. Well, as you will soon find out later as we progress through the game, Sila can see pretty doggone well. I do have turn mode based on, and I did promise you a little uh, opportunity to look at our difficulty options, so I'll do that right now. You'll see that it is custom. We are set to weak here. Um, death door is on, dead companions will not rise after combat, and if companions die during combat, I will do my absolute best to honor that and uh, dead companions will stay dead unless I have the means by which to resurrect them. But we will remove negative effects on rest and remove controlling effects after combat. Um, the negative effects on rest thing, I know it's a bit of a cop-out, but, you know, honestly, dealing with ability damage, uh, as this is a Pathfinder game, is very tricky and very expensive, and uh, kind of leads me to just avoiding more combats than actually trying to engage them. So instead, let's. Uh, I want to be proactive, and I want to. I want to do some fights, right? So we're gonna go ahead and remove those after a rest. Um, auto level up is off. We're gonna leave enemy stat adjustments. This is the same as it would be. It would actually be set to moderately weaker enemies if we just left it at normal. Um, I bumped that up to slightly weaker, and damage to the party still at 0.8. Number of enemies standard. Additional enemy behaviors. Yes, we're gonna turn that on. Um, I think it's perfectly fine for enemies to use abilities that they might not use on easier game modes. Bring them. Um, I want to see them, in fact. Um, and uh, let us, let's, uh, you know, that's it. Uh, other than that, the other thing you'll probably notice is that I've turned Crusade Auto Mode on. The biggest reason for that is, well, frankly, I've tried playing the Crusade Auto Mode and I just don't find it that fun or engaging. Uh, instead, or, uh, I will just let uh, the computer handle all that Crusade stuff and I can sit back and just enjoy the game and the story for what it is and not have to worry about leading armies. Trail me. Aha, uh -huh. we have a we have a loot chest. And we've got some first uh, we've got some of our first uh, inventory items here. So I'm gonna go ahead and equip that to me, um, as I'm clearly the most important person in the party. Um, weapons wise, um, if I equip this to young Milo. It gives me a plus four attack, one to six damage. It's not so bad. What if I give him this cold iron rapier instead? Plus four to attack, one to d4. So we will be going ranged for now with the crossbow. And have a burning torch, tor torch, torch. We'll put that in our secondary hand, uh, mostly just to use it in a pinch if we need to. But since we are a spell casting type of class, we can, you know, just simply cast spells instead. Um, can I equip this? Uh, plus one to attack. No thanks. But minus five to attack. Well, uh, we don't need we don't need the two hand. Okay, yeah. So uh, crossbow it is for now. Um, eventually, uh, hopefully, we'll find some weapons that we can use that uh, we'll be quite good with. Um, and then Sila, my young uh, lady. She's got that long sword here. Um, this long sword is identical in every way, so there's no need to change that up. Uh, five to ten damage. This has got a wider critical hit range. I think I'll actually just leave her on this on the long sword. The flail might also be of use to her. Um, it, in fact, it it be the exact same. It just changed her from slashing to bludgeoning. So no need to worry about that. Again, uh, she's got a bow also already equipped. I didn't mean to do that. Here, put that sword back in your hand. Um, so I think we're good. She also comes uh, with a potion of shield of faith, and I have a scroll of ear piercing scream. And then these are my filters here, as you can see, nothing else of note. And since Anevia is hurt, she will not be assisting in any upcoming fights. Terindal of scale. This is important. Um, Info. So this lets me raise creature back from the dead. We're also, uh, from my understanding, late game. 
uh, impacts with using with these items. But to be completely honest with you, I don't know them all. That's okay. So if I miss something, Who's there? that's alright. The fine apparel of this young elf elf woman is torn and stained with blood, dust and dirt. However, she holds herself with such dignity that you would have forgiven. You would have been forgiven for thinking you were at a high society party and not in the dark, dank catacombs under the city. Her fingers grip her rapier hilt with confidence, ready to draw it at a moment's notice. At her feet lies a dead body, so mutilated that at a first glance it's hard to tell if it's an animal or human. Relax, friend. We're, we're not demons or cultists. Don't poke my eye out with that thing, all right? We fell down here during the attack. I'm Sila, that's Anevia, and this is our new friend. Milo. We're looking for a way back to the surface. Really? I'm so ever glad to hear it. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Camellia. I was also in the square when... When... I can scarcely believe it. How did all those demons get into the city? I thought... Naively, it now seems, that the Wardstone protected us from attack. And Terendalev... I can't wrap my head around it. Something strikes me as off already with her, right? She relaxes slightly, but she keeps her hand on her sheathed weapon. That's understandable, she's meeting a new group. Her self-control falters for a moment, and you glimpse the fear beneath her mask of per perfect placidity. She licks her lips nervously. Um, let's see here. What do I... Buh, 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 buh. We don't have time to talk to her about her. So instead of doing that, we're just going to say, hey, we need to keep That's moving. That's right. It would be the height of foolishness to survive a demon attack, only to perish under a pile of rubble. I don't disagree. Are you coming with us, then? The more the merrier, and that blade of yours is nothing to sniff at. Certainly. Survivors should stick together. It's only sensible. Who knows what else could be prowling about in these caves? Let's see if this poor bloke has anything useful on him. Not to sound like a heartless brigand or nothing, but we kind of need all the supplies we can get right now. I don't disagree. Ah, masterwork dagger. Uh, okay. Well, let's start with Milo, of course. This will not actually help us all that much. It would give us a melee option. That would be slightly better than this torch. However, um, I think I would rather just stand back and poke away than uh, engage in, uh, in, shoot away than engage in melee at the moment. Um, let's oh, wait for let's me get her selected here. You can trust me. Oh, uh, briefly, I guess we should also, uh, well, let's go ahead and uh, quick save here. But we'll options and, nope, I'm sorry. We will uh, inventory. And let's look at Sela. Sela, um, as you may or may not have been able to guess, uh, is a, well, well, does it show me on here? Yes, a level one paladin. All right, and Camellia is a level one spirit hunter. Uh, our formation. Uh, while that's all good and fun and fine, uh, let's instead do something like this. Hmm. This way. Uh, we've got another dead body here, but so also many have, thoughts, so little time. Um, ability? No oh, spells? No. Uh, but no. oh, here it is. Burn! Slice! I'm gonna shoot this thing out of combat. Got a hit. Nice. Oh, and then we kill. Also nice. Anivia is just running forward. Let's just uh, beep off just a little bit forward with her. Ah, there we go. There's more enemies. And then Celia, Celia here, has that limited movement range because of her heavy armor. This other centipede will go. Milo, May take I your see shot your here. Ooh, please. Nice. He's a little crazy sound. We'll go ahead and end his turn there. Ooh, and Anivia 
two weeks of fight, but killed two of the three centipedes. All right, and a uh, bottle of oil would interest a crafter collector. Gold coins and a shirt. Do I have any armor on? Right now I've got leather armor, which does mess with my spell casting. This would uh, um, significantly reduce my, well not significantly, but it would certainly reduce my armor class by one. And I believe it would also be less beneficial to everyone else. Uh, yes, 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 okay. Another scale here. Very, very important. Milo, would you like to take the opening volley? They will break against uh, our resolve. This uh, bloat fly, giant fly, I'm sorry. Bloat fly is, uh, that's from what, Fallout, right? Camellia will just deep hop right up here. You missed, excellent. Celia, boom, finish it off. Select all my characters here and just bebop forward just a little bit more. Let's go ahead and drop a quick save. Uh huh, we've got yet again Let's another. Shake a leg. Them. Boom. One shot, one kill. Is combat over or is there more to be had? Sometimes in this turn based mode, it will let you work all the way through. One initiative count. Uh -huh. Oops. Uh, her skills are also going to be quite important. But for now, let's just stick her right in the face of this, the, this dude. Can I get a shot from anywhere? Die, die. It appears that I can. Excellent. We'll run forward with Sila. Boom. And, ooh, Camellia's banged up. But a line. Aha! Uh -huh. Looks like we got some good, good loot here. So, let's go ahead and uh, divvy that stuff out very quickly, huh? So, braces of armor. Uh, we already have these lucky engraved bracers, uh, which we'll leave on our character for now. Uh, but, these bracers of armor, I believe, can go on. No, they cannot, because our young lady already has some quite good armor on. Uh, what about this fine lass? She goes from 19 to 19. No changes to her AC. So we can just stick that in our pocket for now. She can, uh, uh Camellia, you could use one of those. Boom, she pops her health right back up to a nine. The scroll of inflict light wounds, though, that is something that we can stick in our pocket here. And yeah, I think other than that, uh, we're gonna sort from uh, newest to oldest, All right? Uh, and boom, huzzah! This uh, little detour, while not the intended direction necessarily, not the way of progression, was in fact a worthwhile venture. Um, as we got some nice magical bracers. Wherever my legs carry me. Uh huh. And another. Oops. Another fly here. Wait, wait, Milo, if you would be so kind. Get your shot off. Oh, we missed. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah. Just uh, straight up. Didn't shoot good. Uh, one ability we're going to want to put down here on her is this one here. The charge build. And this lets us just kind of rush into combat. Also allows us to. Uh, Slice. I think we get some advantages on the attack roll as well. As well. Uh, one thing you might also uh, be noticing is that. Demand your blood. Oof, come on, uh, need you to attack better than that. Here's a spitting centipede. Combat these low it levels is always brain. very dangerous, so I'm hesitant. May I see your entrails, uh, please? You are come today's on, sacrifice. Uh, come on. Miss, good, good, good. 
Seal it. There we go. Excellent. We got some loot though. Uh, we got some rainbow quartz and some flame tongue, which uh, look like they are Forward? ingredients yeah, no. Backwards. Backwards. to be used later. Uh, we got a big old lizard here. Lizzy Lizzy. Oh, Let's let give him a shot. Save the last one for me. Uh, another miss. Come on, Milo. Uh, did I mess up again? Too far. I will say the charge uh, commands are a little wonky. Ooh, nice crit. Die! 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 Ah, needed a 13, only rolled a 3. That's okay, Sila. Big Go damage. And Camila finishing it off like a boss. Let's go ahead and uh, see if we can skin this bad boy. Nature check succeeded by Camellia uh, with a plus three modifier. Very, very good. Got some monitor lizard skin scales. Uh, looks like they can just be sold for a profit. Trail me. Uh, all right. And then drop a quick save here. Aha. We've got some characters just up ahead here. Let's meet them. No, I can't just walk away. It's got to be here somewhere. You struggle to make out the man's features in the gloom. As soon as he steps into the circle of light, however, you realize that you've never encountered a creature like this before. The stranger looks like the work of a vivisectionist who attempted to stitch together a lizard and a man. When do I? The, curl, uh, the man notices you and freezes. The curling horn protruding from his head casts a level in shadow on the cave wall. Uh, Glenn, did you find it? Who is that? Uh, the woman looks just as strange as her companion, the, like the cross between a cat and a spider. When she catches sight of you, she immediately drops into a fighting stance. Her movements reveal the lethal grace of a wild predator. The do-gooders here to save our mongrel souls, no doubt. Wait, they might know what's going on up there. Uh, demons are laying waste to Knox. If things are as bad as you say, then we all have to hurry. You didn't come from the direction of the shield maze. Damn it. I couldn't care less about what's happening on the surface, but the maze. I realize that you guys have your own troubles, but we need to be in Canabras. People are dying up there. Please, show us the way out. Um... What is this place? This is the hall where we remember the glory of our forebears. Sorry about the mess. Lame, uh, it lame. doesn't usually look like this. Trust me. Sometimes we even wipe the dust off the exhibits. Land sounds like he smokes that good good. This is where the relics of the first crusaders are displayed. Our lives are short. Our glories are quickly forgotten. This place helps us to remember that we are just as worthy as anyone else, and that our lives are not lived in vain. Huh, the first Crusaders? You've been down here that long? That's crazy. Um, what are you doing? That's none of your bit. We're looking for a holy sword. It was here, in the center, sticking out of a rock. The sooner we find it, the better. Some kids from our tribe took off for the shield maze. They figured it had collapsed, and now it's their time to go up to the surface, like all the legends foretold. Except they don't have a clue what's waiting for them up there. They're not fighters. And Sul, the chief of our tribe, is dead set against it. He says that now isn't the time for the underground crusaders to take up arms. If we get the holy sword, we might be able to change the Chief's mind. It's a fool's errand. None of us will be able to hold the sword, let alone use it to save anyone. It's not an ordinary weapon. It's made from righteous heavenly flame, and will burn anyone who touches it. Do you think you're special, Lan? Also, in a place this dark, don't you think it would be, you know, illuminating the cavern? I'll pick it up with my teeth and tie it to my hand if I have to. It doesn't matter. 
An angel sword and a troop of stalwart mongrels will be able to work a minor miracle. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, you're still here, Wendu, which means that deep down, you know it's possible. Wendu shrugs and turns away. Um, we'll find the sword faster if we work together, is what I should say. But I think instead of for now, sort of holy flame. Well, how did one appear? It came here with its owner a long time ago. Fifty thousand gongs, to be precise. What the fuck is a gong? Seventy years ago, in Uplander time. Thank you. Fifty thousand gongs ago, our forebears found a dead angel here, along with the bodies of his comrades. The tribe gave them a dignified burial, and they were laid to rest with their weapons. But the flaming angelic sword was stuck in a rock, and no one was able to pull it out. It burned to the touch, like real fire. So the rock was placed over the angel's grave. It should be here somewhere. It should be, you said. Maybe the angel will dig himself out and find the sword for us. That might be our best shot in this chaos. Perhaps. I really find it unlikely. Watch your tongue. Yes. Does the maze really leave the up? But they are far from here, and after the earthquakes, there's a good chance they've collapsed. But the maze... There's a legend among our people that when the walls of the maze fall, that will be a signal for us, the underground crusaders. That the time has come to go up to the surface and fight the demons in the final confrontation. Until then, the people say the maze is shielding us from taking rash actions. I'm the only one in our whole tribe to have been in the maze. And even I don't know if it's true. But the further I went in the maze, the fresher the air became. That means that it really must lead to the surface. That I do buy. I do find it weird though. When the Torrent ceiling of... and walls started shaking, the young ones in our tribe lost their heads. They figured the maze was going to collapse, so it was time to go up to the surface. They grabbed whatever weapons were on hand and ran off toward the maze. They think the maze is no longer a danger to them. They've been listening to Wendwog too much. I do find it weird that Torendalov, you know, the gigantic dragon who's dead now, admittedly. Um, doesn't know or has never acknowledged the existence of these people. Don't try to blame this on me. Yes, I told them that our people are capable of making our way through the maze. In the future. But I always told them to wait until I had made a map of all the maze's dangers. I warned them a hundred times. But it was no use. My words just went in one ear and out the other. We'll find the sword faster if we work together. I'll help you. Thanks. An extra pair of eyes can only help. The sword will be easy enough to spot. It looks, uh, swordy. Help us, and in return, we'll get you out of here. Says you, the guy who's never been to the place that will get us out of here. Allegedly, that is the maze. But yes, let's uh, look together. <laughs> now we're talking. Let's get to work. It's a good thing we all bumped into each other, isn't it? Ah, good old Sila. Always the source of bright optimism. What? You want to find the sword quickly so the underground monsters bring you back to the surface. So be it. A uh, realist. That's a provocative but accurate take, Wendwick. All right. And with that, I think we're going to call it for this episode. On the next episode, we will search for this angelic sword that burns like real fire and covers up the grave of a fallen angel. Until then, we'll see you next time. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, thanks for gaming with Esca.